All right, welcome everybody uh, to this lecture on cellular respiration. I want to start uh, by just looking at this crazy looking picture here that shows a complex series of metabolic pathways to give you sort of an appreciation of how complex uh, biochemistry uh, can be. We're not going to, of course, memorize uh, this kind of chaos here, um, but I just want to show you to give you appreciation of how complex this type of thing is. What we're going to do, we're going to talk about cellular respiration today. And um, cellular respiration, uh, what we're going to do in cellular respiration is we're going to take, in, the, in this series of biochemical reactions, we're going to take the food that we eat. Uh, and in this case, we're going to start talking about glucose because it allows you to sort of go through all the steps. We're going to take glucose and we're going to put it into the machinery of the cell, if you will. And uh, what we get from that is we get energy out of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the energy that's in glucose and we're going to transfer the energy to another form of chemical energy. And that is going to primarily be, as you will see, ATP because many, most of the cell functions uh, that go on in biochemistry, at least, rely on the energy source of ATP. Um, before we do that, as we start into that, one of the things you need to, to understand is we have another, I, I mentioned before, there's several different types of chemical reactions that happen. Uh, this is what we call a redox reaction, uh, and that is for oxidation and reduction. So in this type of reaction, what ends up happening is one molecule or several molecules uh, are going to become oxidized, and then other molecules are going to be reduced. Okay, so in this particular set of reactions, what's going to happen is uh, glucose is going to be oxidized. And what happens when you have oxidation is you're going to lose hydrogens from that molecule and therefore lose the electrons that go with it. Uh, in something that is going to be, um, if you have an oxidation reaction going on, it's always tied to another reaction called a reduction action. So in this particular case, oxygen is going to be reduced. And reduced means it's going to be gaining electrons. So you can think about electrons, keep this in mind that they're negatively charged. An electron is negatively charged. If you gain something negative, like a credit card bill, if you think about that, then you have reduction going on. It's reduced, okay? So that's how I like to remember it. And uh, the summary of this here is designed to sort of just show you that uh, there, there's, we're going to break this down into four steps. Different people do this different ways. I'm going to break it down into four steps. Glycolysis, there will be one in here that we will call the P. D, C, as you will see, uh, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. And so as we go through these set of reactions, you notice you get a little bit of ATP there, a little bit of ATP there. But this is where you're going to get the most uh, ATP, uh, something on the order of 34 to 36 Different uh, textbooks differ on this number, so I'm not going to worry about being exact. Uh, there's some biochemical reasons why that is, uh, but certainly most of it comes out in this last step, the electron transport chain. Um, and, and what I want you to focus on, I'm going to walk you through all the steps, and I'm going to show you what happens, for example, in glycolysis and PDC and so forth. But what I want you to remember is I want you to remember what the inputs are, what goes into that reaction, uh, what comes out of that step of reactions like in glycolysis, and what the main goal is, what was accomplished, what's important about glycolysis, what's important about the PDC, Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain. And then I want you to know overall, what's the main goal of cellular respiration, what's accomplished, why is it done, and that is to make ATP, okay? And the reason we need that, that's like if you're going to move your muscles, um, if you're going to think, um, all these processes require energy to do that, to maintain homeostasis, and that energy comes in the form of ATP, okay? So we'll start with 
glycolysis first. And you notice that when we start with glycolysis, we start off with glucose. And you'll notice there's a series of reactions, and with each reaction, there's an enzyme. So for example, in the first step, glucose gets changed into glucose 6-phosphate um, by actually using a little bit of ATP and transferring that phosphate using an enzyme hexokinase okay, to make glucose 6-phosphate. Then glucose 6-phosphate becomes fructose, fructose sorry, 6-phosphate using the enzyme uh, phosphoglucose isomerase. Okay, And that continues on, and there are enzymes for each step. Um, and then at the end, when we're uh, done going through this series of reactions you see here, what we end up with at the end is pyruvate or pyruvic acid. So you can see that right down there on the bottom. You do not need to know for Bio 1 in this course um, each enzyme, each intermediate molecule, and that's why I was saying on that summary chart back there, we want to focus on what goes in and what comes out. All right, so there's your pyruvate. You'll notice also we're putting in ATP, we're putting in ATP, but we get ATP there and we get ATP out there. So overall, what we get, we get about two ATP molecules from this set of reactions, okay? Uh, we also are going to get, um, I'll explain this here in a second, this NAD plus uh, and NADH. Okay, and that's going to be an important molecule later on in ADH. So we're going to talk about that. Okay, so went too far. All right, so um, when we talk about NAD plus and NADH, this is what NAD plus looks like. This is what NADH looks like. And if you notice, they're, they're very identical looking molecules. Uh, and the difference lies right up here. So if you look at that versus that, there's a little bit of a difference here, that extra hydrogen there. And what I want you to think about is that what happens is NAD+, plus, we're going to transfer the energy along with the energy in a high energy electron and a hydrogen from NAD+, plus to NADH. So NAD+, plus becomes NADH once it grabs a hold of a high energy electron. So it's kind of like, it's, it's similar to when we have ADP and ATP and ATP. These are basically one molecule turns into the other and this is the high energy state. That's what happens in this case here. So NAD plus becomes NADH and it's holding on to, at that point, a high energy electron. And that's very important in glycolysis because we're going to use this NADH and its high energy electron in the final step. Okay? All right, so uh, what, once again, you know, just so you're uh, understanding what's going on here, we're taking glucose and the little arrows show you, okay, these are steps and that's a step and that's a step. So instead of showing you all the enzymes here, what they've done is they've just sort of shown you what you get out of it. So here I take my glucose molecule, I use a little energy putting into that, uh, that ends up splitting into two molecules and when I'm all done, what I get is I get my two pyruvic acids or pyruvate. You can call those either one is fine with me in this particular class. I get ATP. So you notice I get four ATP, but I had to use up two there. So I still get two ATP out of it. And I get this NADH molecule, which is again a high energy electron storing molecule that I'm going to use later on. Okay, so that's glycolysis. Uh, the next step um, is what we call the PDC or the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And what's going to happen in this case is we're going to take that pyruvic acid. Okay, there's my pyruvic acid. We're going to break off. There's going to be an enzyme to break off one of these carbons here. And that's where my CO2, or one of the places I'm going to get CO2 coming out. So as you should probably know by now, cellular respiration, as we use up energy and transfer it, one of the waste products that we produce that is in our breath when we breathe out is CO2, which is a waste product. It's something that comes out of this series of reactions. So for example, uh, if you were to exercise, uh, the more you exercise and the more you run, 
the more your body needs to use up uh, energy uh, to perform that exercise, your cellular respiration rate is going to increase, you're gonna produce more CO2. So once I break off that carbon dioxide, my pyruvic acid then becomes acetic acid, and then what happens is my acetic acid, I'm going to attach it uh, to this uh, molecule called coenzyme A, and I'm gonna once again use some of the energy that's in that to take NAD+, transfer a high energy electron to it, to make NADH, and once I hook that coenzyme A to my acetic acid, I get as my output, the thing that comes out of the PDC, or the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, is this acetyl coenzyme A. And that is gonna be the product uh, that comes out, that goes into my next step. So as you can see here, um, as we get ready to go into the Krebs cycle, what ends up happening is there's my coenzyme A. So there's my pyruvate, okay? There's my coenzyme A. Um, and my coenzyme A is going to be um, recycled. So my coenzyme A gets hooked to that and then gets taken back off. That's used to transport really this into the third step, which is called the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle also called the citric acid cycle. So you see different terms for that. Okay, citric acid cycle. Uh, what's gonna happen, that's what they have here, citric acid cycle. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that two carbon molecule, I'm gonna hook that to a four carbon molecule, and I'll be back to a six carbon molecule. So what happens as you go through, once again, there's an enzyme that runs each of these reactions, uh, and you don't need to know the names of these intermediate molecules for bio one. Okay, in bio, you know, majors bio would make you do that, make you learn the enzymes in biochemistry. But for this particular class, for non-majors, general science class, it's okay to know what goes in and what comes out. And so, once again, you've seen this reaction before. Here's my NAD+. I'm going to make NADH out of that. I'm going to transfer the energy from this to NAD+, to get NADH. There's more NADH. There's more NADH. This one here is very similar. This is FAD becoming FADH2. What, what you can think about is that NAD plus is kind of like FAD, and NADH is kind of like FADH2, but this is a lower energy intermediate, okay? So although they're, they're similar in what they're doing, you can just think about, they're, they're similar, but this one has a lower energy state. And once again, also you notice that in the Krebs cycle, I get a little bit of ATP right there coming out, and I'm also releasing the waste product CO2, okay? Um, so at this point, we've produced something like uh, about four ATP, um, which is not very many. In the final step, what we're gonna do is this is called the electron transport chain, also called the ETC, so the electron transport chain. And you might be able to guess at this point, what does the electron transport chain do? It transports electrons. So uh, this is gonna happen across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So remember, in a cell, you have a cell with a nucleus, for example, and then you have other organelles in here some of which can be these mitochondria. And remember the mitochondria has two membranes. It has one on the outside and it has an inner one here. And that's what you see here. This is the inner membrane right there. And so what we're gonna do is on the inside of the mitochondria, which is called the matrix in here, which is right down here, what we're gonna do is our NADH, which again is holding on to these high energy electrons, we're gonna transfer the energy to these proteins, okay? And these are the proteins that are in the uh, transport chain, the electron transport chain. So we're gonna transfer the energy and the electron, and we're gonna, as we do that, as we move the electron down from step to step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer the energy and use that to pump hydrogen ions 
across through that protein into uh, this space, the inner mitochondrial membrane between the outer and the inner mitochondrial membrane in that little space there. So that's what we're using the energy for. So we're pumping. These are all essentially going to be pumps as we think about uh, if you have like a stairwell, okay, and you're rolling a ball down the stairs, okay, it's releasing energy as it goes. Okay, instead of the energy just escaping, which some of it does once again, because the second law of thermodynamics, you're always losing some of that energy as heat. Instead of just losing the energy to the ball just falling down, um, we're going to use that energy to pump hydrogen ions across into this space. Okay, now at the end, as that electron travels down, it reaches the final end point here, and the electron then gets stuck right here and you need somewhere to put that electron or this whole chain backs up and that's where oxygen comes in and you don't have to worry about this one half O2 they do that so this equation will balance out but you can just call it O2 that's fine with me so what happens here is we use oxygen and oxygen ends up being what we call the final electron acceptor all right and so what happens is that electron with the oxygen ends up becoming water. So you produce water in this reaction. And this is why you need oxygen. Uh, and this is why aerobic exercise um, is, is so uh, necessary for generating large amounts of ATP, as we'll see here in a second. So that's a final electron acceptor. Now, once again, we've built up this big giant sort of waterfall of hydrogen ions, if you will. So we have a whole bunch of hydrogen ions all pumped out here. Now, since we have them in such high concentration out here, they're going to flow from high concentration to low. So they're going to go through this pump here, or actually uh, this, this protein. And this protein is called ATP synthase. And what's going to happen is as they flow through the protein, we're going to use the energy as these hydrogen ions flow through here. We're going to use the energy to take ADP and transfer the energy from the hydrogen ions flowing through to make ATP. So I don't know if I said that correctly, just to make sure we're going to use ADP plus inorganic phosphate to make ATP. So this is a concentration gradient. Uh, you could think of it sort of like if this was a waterfall. If you put a whole bunch of water up on a hill and it was flowing down the hill, the energy as the water flows down the hill could be used to turn um, you know, a wheel or something like that. But in this particular case, we have a concentration gradient. And as it goes through, it releases that energy and this protein ATP synthase, um, which you see here in a little more detail. Your ATP synthase takes the hydrogen ions, and as it goes through, this thing's like a little machine here, this protein, and it's used to transfer the energy from the flow of hydrogens to make ATP at the end. So once again, this is a summary just to show you sort of all the steps together. We started with glycolysis, then the PDC, then the Krebs cycle, then the electron transport chain. And what you want to keep in mind is uh, think about what went into each reaction, each step of reaction, what comes out of each reaction, and what was the main goal. So for example, in glycolysis and the PDC and the Krebs cycle, what we really accomplished that's so useful is although we make some ATP, there um, and here as well, I should add. Uh, although we make some ATP, uh, what's really important is that we're making this NADH. We're transferring the energy from the food molecules, we break it down to make NADH, as well as a little bit of FADH2 as well. And uh, when you look at this, what happens in glycolysis, we make a little bit of ATP. In the PDC, we give off some CO2. Um, we make some NADH, that's important. In the Krebs cycle, we make uh, we take in acetyl coenzyme NAD plus and FAD. This is what we get out of it. Uh, we get ATP, NADH, and FADH2. Um, 
as our main important goals from that. But it's really the electron transport chain where we use up oxygen as our final electron acceptor, which ends up giving us water, uh, where we make most of the ATP, somewhere on the order of 34 uh, to 36 ATP from the whole process.